what's up? It's Ken from Flow Tricks. Today I want to show you all some little doubles tricks that I learned along the way to allow you to basically free your hands so they're not always doing the same symmetrical motion, but breaking it apart so you can do two different motions to make your double chucks more interesting. So welcome. Now if you are on my YouTube channel, you haven't seen me in a bit, but if you are on my Patreon and if you are on the Pro Tricks page, You've probably seen me, you know, I'm always posting there. So I always post there first because those are the people that are supporting my lifestyle and my ability to keep making these things. Um, YouTube, I push out a video as soon as I possibly can, but with gigs and stuff, sometimes it gets a little bit crazy. But look at that. If you do want to support Flow Tricks, definitely, definitely, definitely check out the Patreon page, patreon.com slash flow tricks, and you can send me personal messages, and I am more than happy to help you out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So today, uh, today's kind of a lesson to help single nunchuck users get into doubles. That's not to say that double users can't benefit from this too, but it, it can be especially helpful for single users. Now, um, in my opinion, there are two different ways to spin double nunchucks. One is symmetrically and one is asymmetrically. Now there's a million other ways that you can spin it, but just know that a lot of times when people spin nunchucks, they're always going symmetrically, meaning both hands are doing the same technique creates a very nice visual creates a very nice visual because like to the eye it's very pleasing to see sim, sim, um, symmetry movement but sometimes it's nice to create a little bit of variety and this is also really nice if you're a single nunchuck user so what we're going to work on today is a few tricks and they're going to be based off of simple ideas so the idea of using doing two different techniques is one is probably a mindless technique that's easy and then two is gonna be the thing that your brain is gonna focus on. So before you can do two independent techniques, like for instance, if I do a triangle bounce while this hand does digit rolls, um, I'm really just focused on the digit rolls and I'm not thinking about the triangle bounce while I'm doing that motion. So what you can do is think of a move, first just go in your own brain and think of a move that you can do without thinking about it. Let's say it's this triangle bounce, which is shoulder, swing it down by the hip, swing it to the other hip and shoulder, right? This is a doubles move, as you know, because, or we call them L strikes, some people call them triangle bounces. It's this motion here, but we're just using the left hand to go uh, cross hip, same hip, shoulder, cross hip, same hip, shoulder. The first thing you do is you kind of look at the direction that the chuck is moving, because if I have my chucks and it crosses over when I'm swinging down here, obviously you're gonna crash, right? So you're thinking, I'm slashing down in a line, I'm slashing across and I'm slashing up. And then you just have to remember that this hand has to coordinate with that. So one thing you can practice is something like this, where you, this right hand moves in a circle and then your left hand has to swing and avoid it. This will kind of give you an idea for spacing. So if you're about ready to hit, just hold your swing for a second while it crosses, see that? And you should be able to move your hand in a circle. Now. If this feels like a little bit too much for you right now, even just do the triangle bounce with your hand very still like this. This is a good way to start if you're finding the circles a little bit too hard. And then in time, slowly move your hand to a different position while you keep repeating this triangle bounce. Now all I'm doing right now is just moving into different positions. In time, I want you to just start freeing your hand. As, as it keeps going, you're gonna eventually keep trying to move your hand more and more. You're not focusing at all on this triangle bounce on your left hand. It's just moving on its own. So this is a skill on its own. It's kind of like rubbing your belly and patting your head kind of thing, where this has to move mechanically while you're, maybe even your eyes are just focused. You can even kind of just focus at it and just to see where it's at, like this. This is how you break up the motion though, is you first start by doing a very simple move with your right hand, just so you can disconnect from your left and vice versa too. If I do the same thing here, for instance, it's gonna be the same thing. I'm just gonna focus on this hand doing things, very simple things to start, while this is mindless and just moving. <laughs> and so then when you're like rah, rah, you can automatically go straight into this and just be focused on this point and vice versa. So one is the triangle bounce, obviously. So practice that first. And one more time, hold your hand still first, get it moving second. Third, try not to, try not to get into the position where it would slash. Another one that's really fantastic is the figure eight wrist roll. Now, when you're doing doubles, 
the figure eight wrist roll, if you're turning to the side, will give you a lot less, uh, a lot less leeway because you're, this is basically covering your left and your right side. So your right hand has very little movement in which it won't crash. I mean, you can move here and then you have to pull it back as it comes here and back. But if you're standing forward and you do a figure eight wrist roll that goes behind you and in front of you, all of a sudden you have all of this space that you can work with. And sometimes down here, sometimes not because it may hit you, but sometimes down here. So if you can do the figure eight wrist roll, you can even go without the chuck and just see where your hand can be when you are moving it around. So in that same way, we'll hold out our hands, we'll do the figure eight wrist roll, and just kind of move your hand to see how you can place it in space. This also works if you are using a staff. So it's not always a chuck. It doesn't always need to be a chuck. Sometimes it can just be a staff like this. And then you can just start playing around with different motions and different ideas until you can see how you can move it independently without actually hitting the chuck. Um, so down the line, you should be able to grab other props as well. But again, the very beginning is just gonna be to hold your hand still and to do your figure eight wrist roll and to see where you can be with it. Once you do that, then you're gonna just basically start moving it in space a little bit more. And then you're gonna start playing with techniques. Now we didn't get to that point either with the other technique. We're gonna, you're gonna start playing with techniques and you're just gonna start inserting. There's gonna be a timing for when things can happen. For instance, if I slash down, obviously when this is slashing up, they could crash. So I may wait until it goes behind me before I do this big spin. So wait now, you know? Because obviously if I did it here, they would crash because the right hand's coming up, creating a barrier in the left hand. So now it's about, it's about once you get this part where it's mindless and you can move this in space pretty good, you've made that disconnection, the last part of it now is gonna be just timing it out so you can slash it down so you're, they don't crash into one another. The best time, obviously, to do full motions is you have 50% of your wrist roll is gonna be behind you and that's gonna give you the most space. So as you're doing this motion, for instance, this is the time, as it's going behind you, this is the time to do big movements. So you could even do something like this, and I have a big movement here, see, and it's, and it's, and it's basically going through, or vice versa. Let's see if I can go the other way here. Whoosh! See that? So as soon as it goes behind me, I'm just coming up with crazy ideas, back and forth, just moving it across. Um, it also looks pretty nice, too, just because, any, you know, anytime you have this complicated motion, uh, but it's really not that complicated at the same time. But anytime you have a motion where you're crossing over where the other hand was or where you're crossing through where your body is, it creates a very visual, a very visual piece. So this is not a specific technique, but this is a great way to break apart your doubles moves so you can open up a lot of things. Now, don't just try it with figure eight wrist rolls. And don't just try it with L strikes. Do something that you know you can do almost mindlessly and just work it until it's automatic and then work on focus and then work on adding techniques and you'll have a lot of creativity that you can play with. So hope you all are well. And again, patreon.com slash flow tricks if you want to support us, many thanks. And I will see you all too soon.